Welcome to this time of worship for Sunday, the 14th of February. I am the Reverend Karen Hendry, and once again, I am pleased that you are able to join with me alongside members and friends of both of the Glasgow Church of Scotland congregations of Kelvinside Hill Head and Yoker Parish Churches. This morning, we may gather around our laptops, TVs or smartphones once again this Sunday, but we know it's more than a simple catching up on news. Not even the darkness of a pandemic can stop us from gathering because where two or three are gathered, even as we are now, Christ is always present and is seen by those with eyes to behold him. And have we not seen such a light in the neighbour's care and the stranger's smile? The light of God is with us always. Today is Transfiguration Sunday and while last year we might have marked this day with joyous celebration before we move into the season of Lent, which is fast approaching. This year, our celebrations are somewhat muted. It's been a long and winding road to get to this point, and here we are still very much in lockdown, wondering about how things are going to unfold, perhaps even asking about where God is, or when will God turn up to bless us with some peace and consolation? Perhaps it is there, even in the midst of the hard times of struggle, which may cause us to ask questions, that we search all the more for a way through and find in such a search the signs of God's peace and consolation and the reason for our hope.
reflection now to the Gospel reading for this morning and the account of the transfiguration of Christ on the mountaintop. As our passage is read, notice where the words fall in your hearing. Do they bring you peace or maybe wonder? Perhaps even more questions to ponder. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. He loves me, he loves me not, he loves me. On St Valentine's Day, it is all about love, the kind of love that transfigures an ordinary moment into something mesmerising and joyous. And in our Gospel passage for today, we read of that moment happening for Jesus as his disciples looked on. Maybe there was something about being on the top of a mountain. There is something to be said about the wider breadth of view that you can get when you look down from lofty mountain grandeur. On a clear day, the world stretches out before you in panoramic view and there are no hard edges or unsavoury bits to be seen. Instead, everything looks seamless and seems to flow together in a connected harmony of colour and shape. Up there, looking down, you could be forgiven for thinking the world is a more peaceful place and you are beyond the reach of the noise of the traffic and the bustle of people. So, when I'm feeling particularly energetic, I might choose to climb a mountain, or more realistically, a hill, in the hope of finding such a view. In Celtic Christianity, the high places of mountain or hilltops were thought of as thin places which offered us opportunities for moments of divine revelation. The lofty mountain tops were considered to be closer to heaven than the lands below, and they provided places of perspective and vision where one might also glimpse the far reaches of divinity. And it's in such a context that we find the disciples with Jesus. On the mountain top, they witness to the divine light that shines through his very flesh as well as into his soul. The truth of this light is almost too blinding for the disciples who are not used to seeing another in this way. Peter can't stay transfixed for long. He looks away and even while he still has the imprint of the dazzling light in his eyes memory, he wants to be up and doing something. But once again, he's transfixed by God's presence announcing his love of Jesus. God loves him and wants Peter and the others to hear that same message of love. Did they look at Jesus any differently after that, I wonder? And what about one another? Did they see themselves any differently? Did they look and see the love that had knitted them together in their mother's womb and loved them every day since and will love them every day on? The Gospels are full of those occasions when they doubted and feared and sometimes argued and then came out the other side of that strife. Having perhaps remembered and been encouraged by this moment, 
when they saw and heard of one another in love. The story of Jesus' transfiguration invites us to look for more in ourselves and others and to behold within all the glory of good, God's good creation. Now, that is much easier, looking down from a rather high and distant mountain. It all gets a bit more real when we climb back down again amid the problems that living alongside one another brings. He loves me. He loves me. Oh yes, God loves me. And God loves you, and so to each and every person whom you will meet in the street. But even that view is far too small, as we take in the panoramic view of before, because God loves the whole world, right down to every tiny atom that resonates with the energy of a love that unites and holds us all. The whole of the earth is filled with the glory of God, May our eyes see it to be so, and our mouths speak of it, as our hearts learn to love as we are already loved. Let us pray. Lord, you call us to come and follow you, and like the disciples before us, we too are intrigued and wonder about where it is you will take us. And then we see you on the mountaintop grandeur of our existence and we are glad to have followed you there because we like the mountaintop view and the panoramic vista of the world playing out before us. There we are lost in love and wonder and praise and we would dance and sing to our hearts content forever but then then you ask us to walk back down the mountain again, back down to where life can touch us, love us, hurt us. We would stay on the mountain top, but you have now moved on and gone down into the whole of life which draws up close at hand. Here. We walk with you among those who are sad or ill or grieving, needing a comforting word and gesture. Here we might catch sight of someone who has lost hope yet still searches. Here we listen to the laments of sadness for joy lost or never found. Here we look and search and long for the mountaintop experiences we have had once again. But we need your light to show us the way and your heart of compassion to cry out your words from our own mouths. Come and behold, out of darkness the light shall shine. Help us. Even in these long drawn out days of dumbed down light to catch glimpses of your glory in each tender act of mercy and forgiveness that we witness too in this world. And as we gather as your people at the mountains plain, may our recollection of your grandeur renew our hope and set our sights on the things of heaven here on earth. Amen. And now hear us as we pray together in the words our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
for spending this time of worship with me today. I look forward to meeting again with you on Sunday the 21st of February, which will be the first Sunday of Lent. The world isn't all it seems. Every so often we get glimpses of what really is in the flashes of glory glinting in the sun and witnessed by those whose eyes are trained by faith to look for what they believe is ever present. But God's light shines among us, illuminating all that is good and true. Hold on to the vision as we turn towards Lent and walk the more difficult path there is yet another glory still to be revealed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.